Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember, context is everything. Media Network founder and CEO John Michael is reading a small book about dissolving the mind and realizing the self by David R. Hawkins. So what I'm going to be reading now are little tidbits of wisdom about the dissolving and understanding of the ego, similarly to the topic of the previous book, Healing the Child Within, Discovering the True Self, which is what this book is about. So let's just jump right in. Nature of the Ego Hawkins describes the ego as the imaginary doer behind the action. This set of entrenched habits of thought enforced by societal consensus and conscious repetition creates an illusionary sense of a personal self. The primary goal of a spiritual work is to transcend the central processing unit believed to be essential for survival. Understanding the ego's nature reveals its underlying mechanisms so that we may withdraw the value we innocently projected onto it, thereby enabling spiritual progress. That's going to be the kind of the format, just tidbits of wisdom there. Here's the next one. Realization is a progressive process. Spiritual progress is hesitated by understanding the true nature of the ego. It is not an enemy to be attacked or defeated, nor is it evil to be vanquished. It is dissolved by compassionate understanding. In spiritual parlance, ego implies a negative quality, an obstacle to realization because of its linear, dualistic construction. In psychology, however, the term denotes coping and survival skills needed to deal effectively with the world. The world of the ego is like a house of mirrors through which the ego wanders, lost and confused, it has chases, as it chases the images on in one mirror after another, human life is characterized by endless trials and errors while attempting to escape the maze. At times, for many people, and possibly for most of the world, uh, the world of mirrors becomes a house of horrors that gets worse and worse. This, the only way out of this circuitous wandering is through the pursuit of spiritual truth. Because the ego is constructed of uh, positionalities, it has no option to be anything else except what it is. It is therefore becomes an inescapable source of endless suffering and loss. Above all else, it fears the future and the specter of death itself, which is intrinsic in the ego's structure. The ego is not an enemy to be subdued, but merely a, com a compilation of unexamined habits of perception. The ego can be thought of as a set of entrenched habits th of thought, which are the results of entrainment by invisible energy fields that dominate human consciousness. They become reinforced by repetition and by the consensus of society. Further reinforcement comes from in language in its, of itself. To think in language is a form of self-programming. The use of pronoun I as the subject and therefore implies the cause of all action is the most serious error and automatically creates the duality of subject and object. There is no way, there is no such thing in reality as an ego. It is merely illusionary, rather illusory. It is made up of a compilation of arbitrary points of view supplied by mental progress uh, processing and powered by feelings and emotions. These desires represent the attachments that the Buddha spoke of as the bondage of 
the bondage of suffering. These attachments that the Buddha spoke of as the bondage of suffering. With absolute humility, the ego dissolves. It is a collection of arbitrary mental processes that gain force only because of vanity and habit. If one lets go of vanity of thought, it dissolves. Although it is va- uh, all thought can be viewed as vanity. All opinions are vanities. The pleasure of vanity is therefore the basis of ego. Unplug it and it collapses. The ego is neither bad nor an enemy, but merely an illusion to release so that something far better can replace it. The ego is the imaginary doer behind thought and action. Its presence is firmly believed to be necessary and essential for survival. The reason that the ego's primary quality is perception, and as such it is limited by the pro uh, paradigm of supposed causality. The ego fears dissolution, and therefore resists giving up the illusion of a separate existence in an imaginary here and an imaginary now. It fears it will dissolve into being nothing, and consequently the conscious awareness will also cease. With examination, it will become clear that one's reality is not a who at all, but instead it is an intensely loving allness, which is realized and known to be much closer and more comforting than fulfilling and fulfilling than the prior sense of I. The ego could be called the central processing and planning center, the integrative, executive, strategic, and tactical focus that orchestrates, copes, sorts, stores, and retrieves. As we get closer to the discovery of the source of ego's tendencies, we make the amazing critical discovery that we are enamored with ourself. The ego secretly loves and clings to position of victimhood and extracts a distorted pleasure and grim justification from pain and suffering. One mechanism the ego uses to protect itself is known as is to disown the painful data and project it onto the world and others. The ego is extremely tenacious and therefore often seems to require examine conditions before it lets go of positionality. It often takes the collective experience of millions of people over many centuries to learn even what appears to be a simple and obvious truth, namely that peace is better than war or love is better than hate. Although the critical level of integrity, level 200 on the map of consciousness, is is the very threshold of spiritual progress, one can see that due to the structure of the ego, it can be difficult to achieve the strength of the ego. It can be difficult to achieve what? Although the critical level of integrity is the very threshold of spiritual progress, one can see that due to the structure of the ego, it can be difficult to achieve this integrity. The strength of the ego is such that it can be overcome only by spiritual power. The ego has habitual modes of determining perception. They have to be identified first, before they can be disassembled. One has to give up guilt about having an ego. More important is not the nature of the ego, but the problem of identification with it as the me, as the I, or the myself. The ego was inherited as an it, and is actually an impersonal it. The problem arises because one personalizes the ident- and identifies with it. 
that it of the ego structure is not unique or individual. It is and it is relatively similar with karmic variations in everyone. That's interesting. What really varies from individual to individual is the g degrees to which one ins is enslaved by the ego's programs. The degree of dominance is therefore determined by the extent to which one identifies with it inherently. So if I were to describe what I just heard, I'd say something to the degree of the ego is a human mechanism. A human mechanism that functions similarly in all people to varying degrees. How far you let it go. Some people develop coping mechanisms through childhood trauma or adult trauma. Coping mechanisms that rely on the ego heavily for survival, which makes the ego stronger. And while this helps the person survive, it may develop some difficult habits to outgrow regarding their consciousness because the ego works similarly in all people it is identifiable by different folks because it is recognizable i have wafts of heavy ego mo moments so i can understand at some level when i see ego maniacal behavior i can say i do see where that's coming from because I can relate to it at some level. That's how I understand what I just read. From great con a greater context, we can view that the ego is not evil, but it is primarily a self-interested animal. Unless the animal self is understood and accepted, it is influence, its influence cannot be dis diminished. Curiously, the ego holds whole ego's hold is weakness by acceptance familiarity and compassionate understanding in contrast it is reinforced by self understanding in contrast it is curiously the ego's hold is weakened by acceptance familiarity and compassionate understanding in contrast it is reinforced by self criticism con Condemnation, fear, and shame. Temptation stems from within. It is merely the, des the desire to experience the ego's payoff and satisfactions of an impulse, even if it's only curiosity or a wanting. The human ego likes to pretend that evil exists out there and su seduces its hapless, innocent self into inadvertently falling into the trap of seduction. The real tempter is the ego's desire for gain, whether that be sensational, excitement, adva uh, adva advantage, prestige, or the pleasure of controlling others. The psychological source is of seeming evil is primarily the naive childishness of the primitive animal instinct of the infantile ego. This trend, this tends to go into a rage if the psychological source of seeming evil is primarily a naive childishness of the primitive animal instincts of the infantile ego which tends to go into a rage if its impulses are blocked by external authority the same oppositional rage or narcissistic rebellion characterizes the criminal the adolescent delinquent, the warmonger, the puritanical moralist, they are all the same. They're all coming from the same cul-de-sac of the ego. And the ego meaning the human structure 
the common human structure that is the ego that can manifest itself in deeper ways, but only in similar ways. As is, it is well to keep in mind at all times that the ego and the mind does not experience the world, but only its own perception of it. Oh God. Uh, okay. The ego is not real. You. The ego is not the real you. It was inherited as a part of being born a human. It basically originates from the animal wor world. And the evolution of the consciousness happened through primitive stages of mankind's evolution. So it could be said that to seek enlightenment is to recapitulate the history of human evolution. The ego is set a set of programs in which the reason operates through a complex multi-layered series of algorithms, wherein thought follows certain decision trees that are variously weighted by past experiences, indoctrination, the social forces. It is therefore not a self-created condition. The instinctual drive is attached to the programs thereby causing uh, psych physiological processes to come into play. The ego gets a grim pleasure and satisfaction from suffering and all levels of lacking integrity. Pride, anger, desire, guilt, shame, and grief. The secret pleasures of the suffering is addictive. Many people devote their entire lives to it and it encourage others to follow suit. To stop this mechanism, the pleasure of the payoff has to be identified and willingly surrendered to God. Out of shame, the ego blocks out conscious awareness of the mach uh, machinations, especially the secretiveness of the game of victim. A question. The program of the ego do not continue the programs of the ego do not continue unless they are secretly pleasable what the programs of the ego are not continue do not continue unless they are secretly pleasurable that is the secret about secrets the payoff is a gain of the pleasurable satisfying reward the ego has learned to be very clever in order to survive. It is capable of restoring to any length or reuse of self-deception and camouflage. The world we witness is merely the drama of the collective egos acting out on the perceptual stage of form and time. The satisfaction of ego are more pleasurable and addictive than the uh, preservation of human life, much less dignity. By commitment to inner honesty, it will be become apparent that the underpinning of the ego's responses to pleasure that is uh, derived from them. There is an inner satisfaction that is the payoff of self-pity, anger, rage, hate, pride, guilt, fear, and so on. This inner pleasure is as morbid as it may sound, energizes and propagates all these emotions. To undo their influence, it is merely necessary to be willing to forego and surrender to questionable inner secrets, pleasures, and to surrender to God and look only to God for joy, pleasure, and happiness. To undergo the ego, one must to undo the ego, one must be willing to abandon this payoff game. With its grandstanding of emotions and repetitive rehashing of data and stories to justify its position. 
one will note that the ego milks every wrong and that it has no greater pleasure than to indulge in righteous indignation. It's, it, is just, it just loves the juicy personality that has such a great payoff. The ego's addiction, addiction to survival are based on the secret pleasure of negativity, which cannot be abandoned until it first recognizes, identifies, and is owned without shame or guilt. One has to see this is just how the ego, which everyone inherits, operates, and recognize that it is not really personal at all. That's a good stopping point for today. This is a different style of reading and is a little bit challenging for me. So, uh, see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.